was I wasn't going there until you actually heard other accounts of it and you thought, oh, maybe I should revisit this dream. Maybe it was something that happened. Until I started looking into my own experiences. So after that experience in the mountains with Kristen, I saw a real owl. I heard a voice in my head that said, this has something to do with UFOs, a message, right? So I got a message from who knows where it was from. It could have been from my unconscious, could have been from the owls, it could have been who knows. But mm. I definitely saw real owls and in my head heard the booming words, this has something to do with UFOs. And I, in 2006, really started looking into this stuff. So it would have been after 2006, after that event in the mountains with Kristen, or those two events, that I started looking into these experiences and started um, really taking it seriously and looking into my own experiences. Like Now the question is, am I an abductee, right? Given that, given these kind of experiences, right. this is in an abductee is that that's a, that's a, that's a lousy term, right? That's the term we're stuck with. That's an mm -hmm. X Files term. Um, and what I found in, in the last, you know, what is it? 14, 15 years of research. Much of it feels like full-time research is that that's really common that there's this, there's this elusive quality to it. Very, very, there are some people who have like concrete memories boom i remember this event right like travis walton's you know I'm sure oh yeah i've met travis him yeah, yeah, story. you yeah. met him many times yeah oh wow yeah so he's a very nice guy he's from the west i was living out west he's a he's a westerner there's like a kind of stoic quiet soft-spoken mm. quality to the guy he's not the kind of guy that exaggerates right yeah so and here he recounts everything up to the point of waking up on a table seeing these beings in there seeing like actual human looking yep. things in there and then after that wakes up on the side of a road. He was gone for five days and he has like 15 minutes of memory. I'm, I'm, I haven't, it's been a long time since I've read the book. So did he have any experiences with owls when you talk to him? I gotta be careful what I say. Cause he, some stuff he's told me he's, he said, he'll, he'll never listen to this. Don't worry. <laughs> no, but I want to be careful what I say. So you know what he, he was, I was in a group of people when he told me this, mm. he, he said, now this doesn't mean much, but he said his son, as a little baby, as a little child, they had a, a big macrame kind of embroidered owl in the hallway. Really? And he said his son was terrified of that owl, that, that embroidered owl. It was a, like kind of a simplistic image of a, of a bird with big black eyes. And so that's not much to go on. But he, he, was, he was kind of like, he told me that. And, and he, you could tell he was, you know, the wheels were turning in his head. That was his only owl experience that was that's, unusual. That's that the he only told thing you. he shared with me. Yeah, and he's very tight-lipped. He'll say, like people ask him at conferences, like, "Have you ever had any other experiences?" And he'll say, "If I had another experience, I would tell no one." Basically, telling one experience ruined my life. Is, mm. is, is where he's coming from. Ruined his life in the seventies and eighties and nineties, but now it's becoming some sort of a more accepted thing in, in modern culture. I mean, it's a thing that every news channel, every blog website wants to talk about because, you know, now it's profitable. Now it, it draws attention and draws clicks and Yeah. And but it he's he if he given the choice, he never would have chose this. Right. This in his life. Have you have you heard his story about how he told he tells how he w wakes up in the middle of the night out of nowhere and he's running full speed down his hallway to his kid's room and he says his kid is on a top bunk. Oh no! And I he's, he's uh, his kid is like they have the rails in the top bunk that sort of like keep you from mm -hmm. falling off. The kid had, his son had slipped off and he had his neck wedged between the railing and uh, I guess he like grabbed him and and pulled him out and if he would have stayed there for another thirty seconds he would have been dead. So, so, this so he has all these crazy little, he has multiple similar experiences. I've heard him talk about like that, that he can't explain. So, so MUFON is a very dry, you know what we, in the, in the, in the litter, in the research community, there's like nuts and bolts researchers. That's MUFON, Mutual UFO Network. It's an organization of UFO right. researchers. They are very nuts and bolts. And on the other end of the spectrum is this kind of consciousness, love and light thing. And they do not mix these two worlds. Now, the very conservative MUFON mm -hmm. has a checklist. You go, to, you go to a UFO witness's house. It's very this kind of stuff. What time? What day? Which direction was it going? Can you draw a picture of it? Did, you know, it's very scientific. Very, well, yeah, it's very analytical. And in that checklist, they say, ask the witness, have you had any, has your psychic abilities changed since your, wit since your sighting? <laughs> this is like the dry people. This is like, and then, you know, like the people who like, 
ain't going there. They're not going to, and it's right in there in the checklist. Is any, have you developed any psychic abilities? And then also, has it, has your spirituality or religious, have you, have you changed your spirituality or religion since the event? And this, that's, so those questions are kind of at the core of my research. And they're at the, at the, just a tiny little sliver at, in the, in the mainstream mm. UFO witness. I would love to talk to those guys that saw the stuff off the aircraft carrier and, you know, off the California coast and say like, have you had any, like any psychic abilities? What's going on? Weird synchronicities? Like why do they ask, why do these nuts and bolts type researchers ask them about psychic, psychic experiences? Because you because don't that have, can kind of weed people out be like, Oh, this person's a psychic believer. This person's, we can I, dismiss them now. I think it's just the opposite. I think what they're seeing is a pattern. You talk to these people and they'll, they'll, they want to talk your ear off. Someone's taking them seriously. A UFO <clears> researcher <throat> comes to your house and tells you that you get, you're allowed to tell your story without being ridiculed, right? So, mm -hmm. that, so they'll say, like, and all this weird stuff has happened since my sighting. I've had psychic experiences. So these are, this is what's common. After a sighting, this isn't, this isn't aliens in the house. This is just seeing a UFO off in the distance. Your psychic ability increases. I'm generalizing greatly. It doesn't obviously doesn't happen 100 percent of the time, but this is a, a consistently reported stuff. Your psychic abilities increase, your spirituality will change, and you will often be plagued with synchronicities, like meaningful coincidences, and then um, uh, poltergeist activity in the house. So, how are like little aliens in a metal spaceship making poltergeist activity in the house happen? You know, something else is going on that takes it out of the realm of, you know, aliens from another galaxy visiting us on their metal spaceship and puts it more into the realm of these myth makers, this ancient lore of, of something from that other realm interacting with us. What do you think it is? Why do you think that people who have these UFO experiences, who, who have witnessed, who, think that, who believe they have witnessed UFOs, what, what do you think it is? that keeps them having these experiences or different kinds of experiences? What do you think it sort of just like opens up something in their mind where now they're just always looking for weird shit? Possibly. Yeah. So possibly that's one of the problems with the UFO community is because once you've seen the stuff and once you've seen the weird shit, like you're open to everything. And like, let me tell you, like you're, it's like, you got to be careful how open that door gets. Cause there's a lot of people within the UFO community who are primed to like believe in conspiracy stuff. And some of the nuttier, right. like fringier stuff that like, I'm looking for conspiracies. I'm looking for the weird stuff. Mm -hmm. And I have to be really careful not to get dragged down these blind alleys. So yeah, that's, it, it, it turns a, people can get very vulnerable after these events, mm -hmm. you know, to cult leaders, to, to um, like losing their critical thought. Right. And I have, I have done my very best like to, like I try to present myself as a credible person telling an incredible story or telling someone else, oftentimes other people's stories. So I, I feel like I'm hopefully remain credible in the way I present the stuff, but I am presenting things that are incredible and oftentimes beyond belief. Now, um, your question was, uh, you know, why are they open to the psychic phenomena or? Uh, well, the, the psychic question regarding the uh, the UFO researchers talking to these people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Asking about psychic abilities or yeah. psychic phenomenon. To me, that kind of, my first reaction to hearing that is like, okay, let's see if this person believes in psychics. Let's see if they believe they, they have psychic abilities. Or let's, that, that could be on par with saying, okay, when's the last time you saw Bigfoot? You know, okay, now we can just dismiss this fucker because he's, you know, he just believes that he's some chosen UFO abductee and, you know, he's going to believe in every conspiracy that we put in front of him. I think it came the other way around. I don't think they're trying to weed people out. I think it's a legitimate question because what happens is you talk to these people, the witnesses, and they will say this weird thing happened. Like, I, my, my psychic, like, I, my psychic abilities, like, I feel like I have become... I've ha I now have ESP since seeing the UFO. Um, oftentimes people don't know how to control it and, and it's just fleeting little things. That Can you give me an like, example of some sort of psychic ability like this? Um, like what, what would you consider psychic, a psychic ab ability? Okay, so here's the story. This woman, this has an owl in it. There's a woman, her name is Maria Wheatley. She's a crop circle researcher in uh, England. And she was with a friend and they were going to go hike up to the top of a hilltop. The hilltop is called Oliver's Castle. Sometimes the hilltops are called castle. That's what mm -hmm. they call the hills there. So she uh, 
is going to walk uh, up up to the hilltop and there's a path excuse me there's a path in the woods that goes to the tailtop and as they walk down the path this owl a white barn owl flies right in front of them and both get the exact same sensation the exact same feeling they say oh we're not allowed in the woods like it's barring our way so they turned around and then they walked up a different way and you know through the meadows and stuff like that but not up through the forest and the trails they get to the top of the hill and they look off in the distance and there's this orange floating orb out in the distance. And like, what is that thing? And then it and then it gets closer and it grows big and it grows into this big size of a giant cigar and it's coming towards them and then it shrimp, shrinks and disappears. Hmm. So they don't see a metal spaceship. They see this orange disruption of light, mm-hmm. right? So they run back to their car. She said he was shaking so hard he couldn't get his car keys in the, in the car door. And afterwards, now beyond just doing... Um, uh, the the cropsicle research. Maria Wheatley also does uh, tarot reading, where she'll, you know, read uh, divination with a tarot deck. Mm-hmm. She said her ability to do tarot readings increased exponentially. She said it got really high and then it tapered down a little bit. But she is now she feels she is she is much more mystically in tune with doing tarot readings than she was before seeing the orange orb in the sky. Mm-hmm. The guy claims to have gone to the bar, to the pub, and he could read everyone's mind in the bar. <laughs> could see what everyone was thinking, and it freaked him out. It was not a good thing. Like, he freaked out, and that eventually eased off. T- and so th- th- this, if you ask the questions, these are the stories that emerge from these these kind of accounts, these see, mystical, strange stuff. Uh, 